Hello and welcome to the Daily Mail for Saturday the 21st of August 2021. Today was match day, it was not a good day, it was a defeat. A defeat in Wales against Cardiff and it was 3-1, 3-1. Um, this is from newsofthedend.co.uk, I'm reading their match reports, not Sky Sports because Sky is scum. Absolute scum. Fuck Sky Sports. Um, Millwall fell to a second championship defeat of the season and remain winless in the league as Cardiff City made the most of their aerial threat to win 3-1 in South Wales. Aiden and Flint headed in twice from crosses by Bluebird substitute Ryan Giles while Flint's centre-half partner Sean Morrison got the third from a Marlon Pack long throw. The third goal came not long after Benicophobia pulled one back for the Lions. It's now goals in... Um, Back-to-back -back matches for Phobia, but Gary outside has no points to show for it again after a second loss in four days following Fulham's victorious visit to the Den on Tuesday night. Remarkably, all eight of Cardiff Championship's goals so far have been headers. Um, maybe that's something could have been in the scouting report there, Gary. Mill sit 21st after four league matches, whilst Mick McCarvey's side rose to six. The first chance of the game went to the visitors' way in the sixth minute when Scott Malone returned to his former club, skipped past Bluebird skipper Morrison and released the ball to a Phoebe whose shot from six yards out was blocked by Curtis Nelson. From the resulting corner, Murray Wallace couldn't force the ball through the Cardiff bodies. A huge chance fell to Kiefer Moore, making his first league start of the campaign in the 25th minute. And then Joe Rawls spotted his ghosting run behind the middle defence, but the Wales striker could only start an awful effort. Wired from six yards out. Moments later, Jed Wallace tested Dylan Phillips with a tame shot from 23 yards, and it was easily gathered. A phobie remained a threat coming in from the left all first half, but again could only find the leg of Morrison with a 36 minute shot. Then Tom Sang turned Malone inside out and crossed to the back post on a striker foot at half time, but Moore clipped the bar as he headed back across the goal. Cardiff's direct approach continued in the second half and a pivotal change came 63 minutes in when on loan Wolves and fielder Giles entered the pitch along with Leonardo Bacuno. Three minutes later Giles whipped in a delicious left footed free kick from the right which Flint only needed to glance to find the net. And in the 70th minute the same combination made it 2-0. This time a cross stood up from the left which Flint connected with to score again. Rowett sent on Matt Smith and Conor Mahoney to try and salvage something and in the 76th minute hope was restored. A phobie strike and a deflected shot on the, on the half volley into Phillips' bottom left corner in front of the travelling Millwall fans. The fresh legs of Mahoney gave Nelson something extra to think about and in the 80th minute came Millwall's golden chance to snatch a point. The ball found its way to Malone after great work on the right from Wallace but the bleach blonde wing back cracked the centre of the crossbar. Just three minutes after that, it was all over as Pack, whose long throws had been a threat all afternoon, found Morrison at the front post and the Cardiff captain got higher than Daniel Ballard's head low into the corner of the net. The giles Flint com combination nearly brought a hat-trick in stoppage time, but Ballard was well placed on the line to head Flint's goal-bound header away. Mill haven't won in five league games and host Blackpool one place below them in the league in 22nd and also on two points next Saturday after Tuesday's EFL Cup second round clash with Cambridge at the den. Talking points dominated in their own box, which shouldn't happen. The strengths of Cardiff City uh, would have been more than known to Rowett, but stopping it is another matter altogether. The now settled back three of Jay Cooper, Murray Wallace, and Daniel Ballard kept more relatively quiet for the vast majority of the game, but when Giles began swinging in crosses midway through the second half, it was Flint and Morrison's ball almost every time. Given the physical strength of the Lions defence as well as their experience and how they use defending those kind of deliveries, this is not what Rowett would have expected. Ballard impressive at the back, the on loan Arsenal defender stayed on alongside Wallace when skipper Cooper exited as Mill switched to a back four and put Smith up front in search of a point. Why not put Cooper up front? Put Cooper and Smith up front. Ballard couldn't get close enough to Morrison for the third goal from Pax long throw, but Mill did have him to thank late on when he denied Flint a second hat trick of his career by means of a goal line clearance. A phobie still lacking clinical edge but getting plenty of chances. A phobie managed three meaningful attempts on goal against Cardiff, one of which of course found the net via a deflection, and Mill fans can rightly hope that all the promise he showed in his early career at Wolves can be realised. He spent last season on loan at Turkish club Trabzonspor and managed five goals in 29 matches. 
He has 2-4 in, in the league this season, and if he can add that extra clinical edge, then he should get into double figures this season. Yes. Um, yeah, it was a good goal by Fabi. Um, again, he, it was a good skill to get away from himself and away from the defenders to, to then... He kind of just kicked it towards the goal through the through the guy's legs. So two defenders charging him down, and it kind of deflected off of him and went, and then went in the goal. So he got a bit lucky, but man, you, you got to shoot on, towards the goal to get get that luck. You know, if you don't shoot, you don't score. And then Malone, oh Malone, he had a basically an open goal, and he, he just kind of leaned back a bit and just shot, and it hit the crossbar. And then came bounced back out. I was like, oh my god. They could have made it 2 2 there. Oh, it was. To be honest, I would have taken a draw. Another one, but. Yeah. Um, not a very good day. And there's a the team there. So Bierkowski, Romeo. We'll get into why he started uh, later on. Ballard. Mario Wallace, Cooper, uh, Mahoney came on for Cooper, Malone, Evans, Smith came on for Evans, Heftonbeld, Savile, Jed Wallace, a phobie. And the subs were Long, Thompson, Bradshaw, Pierce, Billy Mitchell. Now, some players, so Billy Mitchell again on the bench, not even getting getting on the pitch. What's 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 that about? What's that about? Um. So. You will notice from this squad, no Danny McNamara and no Ryan Leonard. And that's because of this. A new injury setback for Millwall's defender ruled out until the end of September. We have more injuries. This is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk, South London Press's online website. It says Danny McNamara is set to be out for six weeks with a groin injury. Oh, really? While Ryan Leonard is also set for a short spell on the sidelines. The Lions were already without Sean Hutchinson, who is out for six weeks, and Mason Bennett for today's 3-1 loss at Cardiff City. Danny McNamara pulled his groin in training the other day. Looks like he's going to be out for six weeks, which is a huge blow out, it said. To go with Sean Hutchinson, who we missed today, to go with uh, Mason Bennett. So we've had a really poor start in terms of injuries to key players. But Lenny should be a week or two, not quite as serious, but it's disappointing because you don't want to have to fill gaps in your team after three games of the season. Daniel Ballard was excellent today for a young player. What we need to do is have more of the senior players showing the same type of aggression and fight he's shown because his performances so far have been really good. Why are our players getting injured already? Why? Why, 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 why? What are they doing in training? What the fuck are they doing in training? What is happening there? Mason Bennett, Sean Hutchinson, Danny McNamara, Ryan Leonard, all injured. Why? What's happening? This something, something's going on there. Um... That's that's not normal. It really isn't. Uh, so let's carry on with the. So we let's switch over to LondonNewsOnline.co.uk and their uh, assessment of the game. Four takeaways from Mills' three-one defeat at Cardiff City. Backline not looking as sturdy as normal, but a phobia plus. Yeah, because there's no Sean Hutchinson. Mills slumped to a three-one defeat against Cardiff City in Wales at the weekend. Ben Ekafobi netted the Lions' goal to give them a mode briefly after Naden Flint double had the edge to home side into a two-nil lead. The late Sean Morrison goal killed the game off as Mills chased an equaliser. Here are Daniel Marsh's four takeaways from the match. Defensive woes: the Lions have thrived off a resolute backline since Gary Out took charge at Den. By the early weeks of this season, the Mill backline has been uncharacteristically leaky. A leaky. It's now four games without a clean sheet, including giving up leads against QPR and Blackburn before shipping three goals against the Bluebirds today. The Lions are facing up to six weeks without stalwart Sean Hutchinson, and it looks likely they will could be set to struggle without him. No fucking shit. Big Ben strikes again. Ding 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 ding. One positive for the Lions is the free in the three one reverse was Benicophobia getting on the score sheet. 
The online striker got off to the mark in a fortuitous fashion against Fulham on Tuesday night as a lucky ricochet looped over the Whites keeper in consolation. But there was no touch of fortune about his goal on Sally as the hitman made it two goals in two games. We all have lacked a reliable uh, goal scorer pretty much for our, for our entire reign and the phobia is starting to show why he could be the man to finally buck that trend. Squad concerns. Danny McNamara was missing from the line strip to Cardiff with a right back omitted from the entire squad. Whilst it's not much is known about his absence, well we do know now, Rowett will be hoping that he isn't set to be without the youngster for too long. Marlon Romeo struggled in the midweek defeat against Fulham, and Ryan Linden, the Lions' other option at right back, was also missing from the squad for his trip to Welsh Capital. Yeah, well now we know that they are both injured. Another slow start. It's now just two points from the opening four games for the Lions making another slow start to the season. We all have a habit of stumbling out of the blocks and early season optimism has taken a hit after a sobering week against two of the league's big boys. Both Cardiff and Fulham will be in and around the top six where Rowett wants his side to be. The Lions have had a habit previously of raising their game in fixtures against bigger teams, thriving off their underdog tag, but that hasn't been the case this week. Instead, it's been a telling few days which indicate we're outside have a lot of work to do if they want to be challenging for a playoff spot this year. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, you can forget about that. I'm uh, We're in a relegation dogfight. Don't... Uh, all my optimism has faded away into the ether. I am now firmly in the camp that we are in a relegation fight this season. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's what I think. I don't know what you you guys think. Now, I've, I've shown you this before in previous videos a couple of times. This is from experimental361.com. He's a stats guy. This is the fixture difficulty. So he's plotted out all the teams based on bookmaker odds of various companies and whatnot, and he's put them into a table. So this is what the bookmakers think the table will look like. Now you can see me all with all teams there. And then he's gone along going through the months and put plotting out the fixtures comparing the teams that we're going to play. So you look at me all on 14th. So the first game was against number 10, QPR. And that was a draw. And it's, it's a great team. Meaning, yeah, it's uh, average, the average team. The teams in red are the top six. The teams in blue are the bottom six. So, so we played QPR, we drew with them. Uh, we played the team in tw that were predicted to be 12th, Blackburn, we drew with them. Then we played the team in first and the team in fifth, and we lost against them. So pretty much it's bang on. It is what it is. It, it, they, we are who we think we, if they thought we are. Now we could have beaten Blackburn. There's not much in it. We should have beaten Blackburn, but we only draw. That's why I was. That's why I was kind of upset in the video after the game. Um, yeah, I was because that was that was a game for us to get three points, and we didn't. So now we play the team in twenty fourth. We play. The team predicted by the bookmakers to be the worst team in the league. We need to beat them. If we do not beat them, fuck your fucking draw. Fuck your draw. We need to beat them. We need to beat them by two goals or more. Or we are in trouble. I'm telling you now. We are in trouble. And then you can see there's, I think there's a gap for internationals. And then we play West Brom, team predicted to finish second. And then we play Swansea, team predicted to finish eighth. Could we get a result out of that? Where are we, who are we, where are we getting wins from? And then we play Coventry, so they actually smashed us at the end of last season. But they're predicted to finish 20th this season. Can we beat them or will they smash us again? Who knows? So, here you go. It's all going as expected. It's We're not bucking expectations. We're not playing better than we were last season. We are who they think we are. So, if that's how it's going to pan out, we're finishing 14th or there or thereabouts this season.
and now I'll be I will be happy to finish 14th because the way it stands now we are we are looking at possibility of relegation this season especially with all these fucking injuries that are happening how are we getting so many injuries what the fuck is happening uh, so what did Gary Rao have to say for himself uh, here we go this is from other news online uk mill boss Rowett. we got our muscled by Cardiff on set pieces you have to do better with balls in the box Gary Rowett was disappointed that Mill didn't deal with Cardiff City's physical presence in today's 3-1 reverse at the Cardiff City Stadium. The Bluebirds' three goals were all headers, and Rowett felt his side didn't stand up to their opponents enough. Rowett said, they're the best in the division at attacking those balls into the box, but I don't expect us to get out-muscled for two of them. Certainly the first one he gets a free header, he just loses our defender. I'm disappointed because I don't think there was anything in the game. We handled large parts of the game well. We moved the ball quite well at times and got into good positions without making the most of it. Even at 2-0 down, we score a good goal. We then hit the bar where we should make it 2-2. And at the start of the season, we haven't made those moments go for us. It is what it is. You come to Cardiff and you don't stand up to their physical presence. Then it's going to be a difficult game for you. And for those moments, we didn't. You have to deal with it. It's a challenge to deal with it. I didn't think they posed a massive threat to us in open play particularly, but it was those balls in the box. And that's part of the game. Part of the championship. What Mick McCarthy's done is utilised what he's got at his disposal. And if you have Sean Morrison and Aidan Flint in your team, as well as Kiefer Moore, then of course you're going to put balls in the box. But if you're an away team and you're coming here to get some points, then you've got to deal with it. And if you don't, then you don't deserve anything. Quite frankly, today, our performance deserved more, but our defending from set pieces has taken that opportunity away from us. Really? Okay. Mm. Um, and now this. So, we're still trying to sign this magical one player who will change everything. Because that's all it, all it takes, is that one signing to change everything. It doesn't matter about the system, or the formation, or how you set the players up to play. We just need. We're just missing one player. Just one player. And then it will all be fine. We, we're working hard to see if we can bring someone in. Lions Chief sticks to transfer stance. Mill boss Garen Rout has again reiterated his desire to get in one more attacker player in. But again insisted players need to move on first. The Lions have made five signings during the current transfer window. With George Long, Scott Malone, Benneke Fobie, Daniel Ballard and George Savile all coming through the door. Rout said... Uh, speaking after today's 3-1 loss at Cardiff City, he said, I'd like another attacking player. We've spoken about that. We're working hard to see if we can bring someone in. But I've also spoken quite a lot about uh, we haven't had many players go out to balance that side of it economically. I'm also mindful as a manager. I can't just say I want players. I want players. We have to find that flip side to it of letting players go out. So hopefully something will happen in the next week. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we're not going to get a golden solution. We've got to work incredibly hard until we get those players in. But if we don't, then we need a little bit more from the current squad. <clears throat> wow. Okay. There you go. He's saying it himself. It's not a golden solution. He's literally saying it himself. The one, one, one attacking player is not going to solve anything. He says it there. You need to get more from the current squad. Yeah, maybe if you uh, sort the formations out. Maybe don't wait until you go two goals down to start fucking attacking. Maybe that might be a thing. Maybe start out attacking and then switch to defence. Maybe do that. Maybe if we get the lead and then we can switch to 5-3-2 two, two and defend more. How about that? Hmm? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just carry on doing what you're doing and wait till we go 2 0 down and then fucking bring Matt Smith on. Like you always fucking do when it's too fucking late. Yeah. And he said this as well. So this is from News of Den. Curly case. It's a big week. Big week. We all boss challenges players before crunch games against Cambridge and Blackpool. Crunch games for Millwall against Cambridge and Blackpool. 
a mighty, mighty Cambridge and a mighty Blackpool. Ay, ay, ay. Gary Rao emphasised to his players they have a big week coming up after their 3 1 loss to Cardiff. On Saturday, left them just two points after four games in the Championship season. And you can see here, if you look on the right, the table as it stands, it's early days, but four games. We are one place above the relegation zone. And we are on minus three in terms of goal difference. And the team that we are playing next, Blackpool, they are the same as us. They are the same as us. They are on two points and they are on minus three goal difference as well. So there you go. The Lions have one win in five games, the 2-1 victory over Portsmouth in the first round of the EFL Cup. Mill will face Rowett's former club Cambridge United at the Den in the second round this Tuesday before they host Blackpool in the league next Saturday ahead of the first international break this season. The message is we've got a big week, Rowett has said. I've spoken to the players about that. If we can go and beat Cambridge and go and beat Blackpool, then we go into the international break feeling slightly better for it about ourselves. It's important we do that. But we've got to work incredibly hard to do it and not just show glimpses in games. We're going to have to show some more complete performances. What does he mean by work incredibly hard? Does he mean extra training? Is that why all the fucking players are getting injured? Because of all the fucking extra training, working hard? Is that what he's talking about? <sighs> Those moments in the games, we just have to make them go our way. I felt Cardiff made those moments go their way with a bit of desire, and we needed to do that today. It's early in the season, but you never want to start poorly. You never want to start after four games and only have a couple of draws to your name. So we've got to pull our socks up and show a little bit more Millwall character and add to that little bit of quality we've seen. I want more. Indeed, we all want more. We want more attacking. We want more goals. We want more excitement. We don't want more defending because that's not fucking working, is it? What do you guys think? Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.